Put your glasses up, put your glasses up, a toast to me. Welcome to a Toast to the Men Network with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. You do not want to miss being notified of this great content. Also, when this video ends, go to a toast to the men.com and check out what we have to offer. Toasters, 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 the five signs to recognize the dark spirit of masculinity. The dark spirit of masculinity. Of course, we have light, we have dark. Now, this is going to be the counterpart, the counterpart, the male counterpart to the Jezebel spirit. Now, in my last video, I, I uploaded, uh, which was the five signs of the Jezebel spirit. Got some great feedback on it, but I've had a couple of females saying I was being biased, saying I was uh, delusional. Uh, uh, also saying I was creating a narrative and painting a picture to support my own personal view, which is semi-correct. But what people have to understand, uh, not all people, particularly these two ladies, what they have to understand is when I talk about a topic, I'm not going to cover every aspect of a topic, right? So if I'm talking about the uh, Jezebel spirit, I'm going to focus on that. I don't have to bring the male into it. At that time, I don't have to bring the mail into it at all. I have to make a video on it at all. But me being objective, I had already planned on making a video about the male counterpart, even though I don't believe the male can have a Jezebel spirit. And I'll get to that later. But I had already been thinking it. And, uh, you know, it was just kind of confirmation that, I, you know, I just need to go ahead and do it. But, you know, just because I speak on something with the female demographic, a certain, you know, demographic within the female demographic doesn't mean uh, I'm negating or, or letting off men of that same caliber, uh, letting them off the hook. That doesn't mean that, you know, we got to focus. We got to be objective and we got to deal with the task at hand. For instance, if I'm going to make a video about the dangers of drinking soda, I'm going to have a few people in the comments say, well, what about red meat? Well, what about uh, cheese? Well, what about dairy? Well, what about white bread? That's just how some people's minds work. Yeah, we're not talking about dairy. We're not talking about, you know, all this other stuff, red meat. The video is about the dangers of drinking soda, right? And so, you know, like I used to tell, tell my wife, like, you got to be patient with people because we're all in the same class now, meaning... When we were younger in grade school, you might have people in remedial classes. You might have people in special ed, AP classes, just a normal, regular class. You may have people in the 12th grade that's reading on the fifth grade level or people in the fifth grade reading on the 12th grade level. But these people were separate. You know, they might, might come in contact and pass and they may not ever see each other because they're in different schools, different classes within those schools. But when you become grown, the lowest, whoever you believe is the lowest of the lowest, or whoever you believe is the highest of the highest, will come in contact with one another, period. Unless you, you know, hide in the house. You will come in contact with every walk of life. And so you got to be patient with one another, understand that not everybody reasons the same, not everyone is objective, not everyone has the same perspective, and nor should they. So, but that's a test for us as creators to be patient, you know what I'm saying? Just break it down as best you can and, you know, keep it moving. But I do not believe the male can have the Jezebel spirit because I believe the Jezebel spirit is a female, a feminine, a feminine spirit that uses sexual seduction for the most part to control, destroy, manipulate, and lie. For the most part, it uses sexual seduction. Now, can the man use sexual seduction to lie, steal, uh, manipulate, destroy? Yes, but not on the same scale as the Jezebel, as the feminine spirit, not even close. A man can have an impact on the woman he's dealing with sexually, he can have an impact, but most times it kind of stops there. Or if he got two or three women, 
he's dealing with, they may collide, but it stops within that circle, right? Most times. A woman, the Jezebel spirit, can take over, can influence a nation, can influence wars between nations, can destroy a county, a town, a state. Reason being, a woman is very influential, very impactful uh, to a man she's with, especially if he loves her, especially if he uh, cherishes her, you know, respects her. She's very influential. And I consider the man the head. You know, some people don't like that. It is what it is. The man's the head. For the most part, we deal with logic, order, discipline. But we can't be rigid. So you have a counterpart. You have a partner, the feminine spirit. She's more flexible. She's more uh, free-spirited. She's more observant. Um, yeah, she's more open-minded. And that can be to our benefit. It really can. If we're both righteous, man, in our natural selves. I'm righteous in my masculinity, and she's righteous in her femininity, and we come together on point. Man, that is a powerful team. The problem comes in when one or both of those those spirits, those energies, is, is, is a toxic or unrighteous. So let's say, for instance, we had a righteous man, a righteous head, but he's in love or loves this woman he's attached to, he's married to. She has the feminine spirit, but she's unrighteous. He's the head, she's the neck. You know, a woman can whisper certain things in a man's ear to have that head turn the way she wants it to turn. A woman can propel a man to righteous, righteous great, greatness by whispering in his ear, by being that neck that turns him in the way he needs to turn. On the flip side, she also, she also can whisper some things in his ear and influence him in a way to have them turn to wickedness. This is why it's so uh, detrimental. This is why the Jezebel spirit is so powerful within the world because men, for the most part, are world leaders. They're household leaders, they're community leaders. They coach kids, they preach, they teach. Uh, they're uh, politicians, lawyers, the judges. For the most part, uh, we make up the heads of those positions. We have a lot of influence in those positions. And if you have a woman in your ear, you're attached to a woman that is not righteous, that is evil, that has that Jezebel spirit, man, it could cause a lot of damage. It can cause a lot of damage, man. And we just witnessed this, and I don't want to harp on this, but we just witnessed this with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. And, and Chris Rock, Will, Logic, Order, laughed at the joke of Chris Rock. Not a big deal. But that look in her eyes to Will was symbolic of a whisper in his ear. And she turned that head. She was the net. She turned the head in the way she wanted to turn it. And we know the rest. And so this is the problem with the Jezebel spirit. This is the the problem with people thinking, women thinking, the man can have the Jezebel spirit. It's just not so. Now, can men be evil, destructive, manipulative? Yes. But for the most part, it's through aggression, tangible, physical aggression, things you can see. You know, it's not behind the scenes. It's things you can see. Um, it's through power, through uh, relationships, manipulation, through money, you know, position. You know, but it's most times it's not whispering in someone's ear. It's not real subtle. Do you have those small pool of men that can do that? I don't know about reaching up to the top doing it, but I'm sure, yeah, you got those men that, that can do that. Just like you have a small, small pool of women that can use masculinity to come up. But how far can either one of those parties go by operating in the spirit that's not natural to them? Like I know a couple of women that, went to the penitentiary for strong arm robbery. Man, that seems weird, right? A woman committing strong arm robbery, robbery, that means physically, 
physically taking something, physically robbing without a gun, without a weapon, just with your hands, physically overpowering someone to take something, strong arm robbery. That seems weird, right? A small pool of women that do that. Small pool of women, men that can use feminine energy to get what they want. And even if they, you know, back for the other side, even if they're on the DL, how far can they go before they're exposed, before they're shamed, before they're ostracized? How far can a man go using that energy? I don't think too far, right? Uh, I don't think a woman can go too far using masculine energy uh, to her advantage. I just don't believe it. We've heard women going or moving to the top through sex, sleeping their way to the top. I have never heard of a man sleeping his way to the top. I just, I hadn't heard it, you know, you know, correct me or educate me uh, in the comments. If you've heard of a man sleeping his way to the top, just, I hadn't heard it because that's not his natural superpower. That's a woman's power. Femininity is a woman's superpower, not a man's. Yeah. So let's get that right. A man cannot have the Jezebel spirit, but he can have a dark spirit, be toxic, masculine, have toxic masculinity. Yes, yes, he can. So what are the signs of this type of man? I'm sure there's many signs, but I'm going to give five. I'm going to give five signs to recognize the dark side of masculinity, which is the counterpart to the Jezebel spirit. First, does everything right. This brother does everything right, man. Never in a bad mood. Never had a bad day. Uh, always smiling. Man, an old man once told me he trusts no man that always smiles. He said he don't trust him. And I laughed when he said this. I was a young guy. He laughed at the time. But as I got older and started living more, recognizing people more, and being around people more, and I noticed that a lot of people were masked things behind a smile and they masked their true feelings, their true darkness, but it always will come out. It always has a way to come out and uh, it's going to come out at the, you know, most unopportune time, the wrong time, you know, according to them, but it's always going to come out. So yeah, that, that old man said, never trust a man who always smiles. That means, man, you're never sad. You're never depressed. You never have a bad mood. I just don't think that's realistic. And so uh, this person, in my belief, has a dark side that they're masking, you know, and it will come out eventually. He's the perfect gentleman. So this is 1A. He's the perfect gentleman. You know, uh, open doors, pay for all the meals, uh, massages the feet. Massages the body. Um, man, doesn't, doesn't let you pump gas. I mean, everything. And I believe in all those things, right? But he does it. He does it all. I mean, he does it all. No flaws. He does it all. The perfect gentleman. Very attentive. This brother puts all this time into you. He knows when you want to drink a water before you say it. He knows you're in pain, you're stressed before you say it. He knows everything. Very attentive in the beginning, but he switches up later. Very attentive. And the information I'm sharing with you guys is information I've gotten from women throughout the years. And some of it are ways of my old self, my dark side also. So this isn't something that I pulled from a hat. This isn't something I Googled. This is stuff I got from women I've spoken to throughout the years. And when I reflect on my own dark side throughout the years, this is where I'm getting this information. Great listener. Great listener, man. He, he laughs at every joke you tell. He thinks you're a great storyteller. When, man, we know women are not the greatest storytellers. Let's be honest. But he thinks you're the greatest storyteller, man. Great, great listener. Remembers everything you say, every single word you say, always attentive. That goes hand in hand, being a great listener, being attentive. But this guy is batting a thousand, man. Like, he's batting a thousand. This is perfect, right? If it seems to be too good to be true, 
Ladies, it probably is. It probably is. Everybody has a dark side. Very giving, very generous. Uh, give you anything you ask for. Never tells you no. Um, on the on the front end, on the surface, seems like he doesn't even want an exchange. Doesn't want anything in return. Doesn't require anything. It's give, 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 give. Anything you want. No rejection. Always has it. Always willing to do it. But at what cost, ladies? What cost? What cost? There's always a trade-off in life. And so you got to ask yourself, what am I going to pay for? What am I paying for? What am I paying with on the back end? There's always an exchange in life. There's an exchange of energy. Now, that exchange can be uh, righteous or unrighteous, can be fair and unfair, can be manipulative or just, but there's always an exchange. That's just the way we're wired. That's the way of the universe. There's an exchange, right? No apparent flaws. No apparent flaws, man. Your mom loves them. Your sisters love them. Um, Your dad may be a little iffy. He may be a little iffy or he may respect him, but usually it's the dad that's kind of a little iffy when this guy has no flaws and he's perfect. Uh, Everybody, you know, loves this guy, man. Nobody has disdain. Nobody can say a bad word. And listen, I don't know anybody can go through this life without pissing on somebody. I don't know anyone that goes through this life without being the villain, without ever being the antagonist. Is that possible? The question is, ladies, charismatic. Now, this is the number one thing I think is charisma. Uh, Women love, people love a charismatic man, but we're focusing on women right now. So women love a charismatic man. They love a nice dresser, nice speaker, guy that smells good, the walk, everything, man, the haircut. They love certain stuff. They love a charismatic man. Love someone. They love someone that can make them laugh, right? And uh, this is just a cherry on top, I guess, or you know, all this other great stuff this guy does. This is stuff you got to watch out for. And the first guy I really thought about, man, when I started creating this, is the rapper, the entertainer, Mystical. You know, if you don't know, Mystical was arrested again for another alleged sexual assault slash strangulation before he went to the penitentiary in 2004 for the same charge and think he served like six years i think before that incident he was accused of something but then when he was released from the penitentiary he was accused of another sexual assault now i'm not here to judge this man i'm not even here to judge you know the previous video the jezebel spirit is just for us to learn teach uh, deliver information, be observant how to move in this realm, in this world, but it's not a condemnation. So uh, I'm in no position to judge, but I don't know if the brother's guilty or not, although he was convicted once. But let's play devil's advocate. At the least, at the least, he's stupid for putting himself in the same position, attached to the same environment, the same energy, the same type of woman. In 2004, he allegedly accused a woman of stealing from him and proceeded to sexual assault her, uh, strangle her, you know, kidnap the whole nine. Now, this recent charge, uh, the, the person, the victim, the potential victim, alleges that he accused her of stealing from him and proceeded to strangle, to sexual assault her. But man, if you ever listen to a mystical interview, listen to his music, this brother is very charismatic. Very charismatic, man. Smooth talker, fast talker. Got that New Orleans lingo, jargon. You know, cool, seem like a cool, cool brother on the surface. Women think he's attractive. Brothers think he's cool. You know, when this brother was in his heyday, he really did his thing. Brothers rocked with him. Females rock with him, right? But, you know, we, we got to take that in consideration, man. You know, that's a way to lure women, you know. And it's not a bad thing to to attract women. 
but what is your motive? What is your intent? That's the whole thing. Moving on, controls with money. Now, this is a huge thing. And so this is the, this is the equivalent to how the Jezebel spirit uses sexual manipulation, sexual seduction. The man will use money, right? Sounds familiar? She wants money. He wants sex and exchange, right? And I don't care what woman it is, man. She's going to want access to your money. She's going to want you to spend your money on her to show that you're invested in her, that you dig in her, whether she's, you know, a hoe or whether she's a righteous woman. Yes. She wants to know you're into her, even though some women say they don't have the love language of gifting. A woman wouldn't know how you feel about her or where you spend your money, man. My mom used to tell me that. Like, if you want to know where a man's heart lies, look at his checkbook. She used to tell me that. That's where his heart lies, wherever he spends his money. And it's true. It's true. Wherever a man spends his money, that's where his heart lies. But how is he using the money? What is the motive? What is the intent? Is he using it to manipulate, to control, to destroy and lie? Or is he using it righteously to show his appreciation, to show, you know, hey, I appreciate what you do. I cherish you. I'm going to reward you for being down. Or is it to manipulate and control? Now look at that, ladies. Next, controls with fear. Now, this is uh, twofold. He can control with fear through physicality, uh, the threat of harming physically, or uh, through leaving. Now, I have done that, uh, the threat of leaving. I have thrown up the D word in relationships, leaving, separation in relationships. I have done that. And that is a manipulative spirit. That is a controlling tactic. And I have used it. Yes, I have. Um, and I don't think that's discussed a lot, that, that fear of a man leaving, using that as a tactic. I don't think we dive into that not a lot, but I know that's done a lot. Uh, I know I've heard a lot of men use that. So, uh, and it's a control tactic. It really is, man. It really is. And so that's something you got to look out for. So that's a clear sign. Also, always has time for you ladies. Listen, I know it's appealing. I know, you know, you cherish it. You feel like you're on top of the world when he's always putting you first. But you should never want a man to put you ahead of his mission and purpose. There will be a payoff. There will be an exchange. It'll come back to hunt you. It'll come back to bite you. If he's placing you at the top and he's not focused on his mission or don't know what his mission and purpose is, that's going to come back to hunt you. He's going to play the blame game when things are not going his way in life. He's going to use that as a guilt tactic on you. And you got to be, you know, ask yourself, why is he giving me so much time? You know, him not being focused on knowing his purpose is one tactic. But is he looking for an exchange in the beginning? I mean, in the end, is he looking for something in exchange? You know, is this a tactic for him to get something from me? Is this a setup? You got to look at that, man. But you don't ever want to be the top of a man's priority, the very top, man. It should be his mission and his purpose, ladies. So that's a telltale sign that you, you're going down a dangerous road if he has you above his purpose and his mission, period. Hypersexual. Hypersexual. Now, I know I said men on a grand scale cannot have great influence sexually. Because that's just not our superpower. Uh, so sexual seduction, femininity, the feminine energy is not our superpower. Now, do you have gigolos out there? Yeah. But what kind of impact do they really have other than the women they deal with? Because, again, they're not dealing with women who are heads. So they're not whispering in their ear to have an impact on the community, on the country, in a job. Right. They don't have that kind of influence because the woman's not in position and that man is not practicing masculinity. So they can have an influence on the woman they're dealing with. They can destroy that woman they're dealing with or women they're dealing with. But really to have a huge impact, I, I just don't see it. Not through sexual seduction. 
Yeah, through power, force, um, connections. Yeah, definitely a man can do that. But to have a grand impact through sexual seduction, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. So, but you got to be cognizant of that, women. Why is this man hypersexual? I know you get off that he, you think he's always into you, always want you. Um, and, and that's that's cool. That's cool for him to be heavily, greatly uh, attracted to you. But, man, we got to have some boundaries. You got to have some boundaries. And if he has a lot of time, a lot of time uh, to always have sex, like, again, what is he doing with his life? Is he focused on his purpose, his mission? Is he growing as an individual? So you just got to really look into that, uh, be cognizant, be aware. Is something healthy? Is it unhealthy? You know, so there is a, you know, there's certain things, a healthy sex life, a healthy sex drive, and an unhealthy sex drive. So you just really got to look at that question, his history, his sexual exploits, you know, his tendencies, you got to look at that. It will come back to haunt you. So these are the five dark masculine signs. Five dark masculine signs of the male. Be on the lookout for this. Listen, this is not to judge the man. This is not to judge the Jezebel spirit. It's just an observation, man, for us to learn, for us to teach, to share, exchange information. That's it. No one bats a thousand in this life. No one. Hey, as always, from me to you, love, peace.